Hello and welcome to Farm Space Combine Race or oh, Struppe Races 2024. Um, I'm talking to Constantine, uh, otherwise known as Mr. Ideal, apparently. Uh, we're talking about the Fent Ideal, the whole concept, where it came from, and uh, why is this a proper combine. So let's find out. Constantine, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. What about you? No, good, good. Uh, a little bit chilly this morning, but otherwise very well. Excellent. So, okay. Um, we're here in South Africa. Combine race. I don't know if you do these things either uh, um, um, back in Germany as well. We don't. You but don't? it's all right. <laughs> yeah, you, you can watch us have all the fun, eh? <laughs> um, okay. So, things ideal um, behind you. Give me a little bit about... So, this is a... A new concept or a new combine, um, totally new concept from the ground up. Give me a little bit of background. First of all, um, what do you do um, in the Fent factory or the uh, the Fent company? Give me a little bit of background about that. That's re correct. So it's a relatively new combine. So we started back in 2017, brought it to the market in 18. So we are in the market now for quite a few years all around the club. So we are a global company. We are serving all farmers around the world. So South America, enlarging that from Brazil into all neighboring countries, Paraguay, Ecuador, and so on, Chile, and others to come. North America, Europe, Africa, and Australia, New Zealand. So it's a global machine. We're serving all different conditions. Uh, the reason for that development is easy. Echo is a global company. We are serving all regions and all markets through our network and the combine is one of the key products. So that's the reason why we have started that. So we need to serve our farms with and our you, solution. you needed something that can work over all... All um, conditions, all regions, all crops. That's the main target and that's what it's made for. Okay, so um, what has been your involvement in the design and the development of this combine? Well, I've been involved since the very beginning, basically. Um, so we are global, so we have our different regional engineering sites but also other uh, departments of course around the globe so we worked all together hand in hand and brought together basically the ideas and uh, requirements from all the different regions to make this unique platform that fits basically all regions like nobody else okay so what was the first thing how did you uh, let's let's start with that because this would be really interesting what was the first thing that you started to design on and the rotors or did you look at the feeder? Did you look at the, uh, uh, um, the cleaning shoe? Where was, where was the first thing that you looked at? Good question. Basically, where it starts is the heart of the machine. The heart of the machine is the processor. So at the very beginning, it became obvious it's got to be a rotor machine. Yeah. Right? So we need gentle crop. We need superior crane quality. We have an unbeaten crane quality that nobody else is able to compete with. So that was the main target, to have capacity combined with the best superior crane quality. So that's where it started. And then, of course, all these surrounding modules are created based on the base requirement, which is, as I said, throughput capacity and, of course, the efficiency with the superior crop quality. Okay, so you basically then went for a rotor. Uh, specifically on the bigger machines, you went for a twin rotor Correct. and uh, um, the, the seven, you just went for a single rotor. Is that just because the amount of material that's coming through, you do not need a twin rotor to be able to process that? Correct. So basically it's lower mass, lower throughput. So that's why a single rotor is sufficient. And then on the higher capacity machines, we needed to go to a twin rotor. Okay. And then um, you couldn't make the rotors a little bit longer, eh? Well, they're already the longest in the market, <laughs> but you know what? There's always limits, right? So designing machines today uh, will not necessarily get bigger in space because we are limited to, to homologation requirements. So they can't go longer, can't go wider, can't go higher. So we maximize basically what's possible with a 4.85 meter long rotor. So that's more or less almost what was possible. Uh, in combination with all the side requirements. So this is the longest rotor already for low losses and uh, superior crane quality with a high gentleness. Okay, so then you, um, so you basically had the two um, rotors. Um, you set on the design, okay, right, cool. We're going rotor, to twin rotors and the rotor. And then um, how did you come up with a, you call it a what, a double helix design or something like that? How did you come up with that design? Well, that was based on the requirements, right? So we start from what are our desired outcomes. So we want to have superior crane quality. We want to have 
superior straw quality. We want to have basically no broken grain, so splits are more or less an impression on that machine. And that leads, let's say, to some R&D activities, the research advanced engineering activity. And that led us basically into that direction that this is combining our desired outcomes and providing what we are looking for. So this is an activity like every other OEM does as well. How can we get to the desired outcomes? And this led us to the helix structure. And am I correct in saying is that because you've got the, the long rotors, is that you almost spend more time threshing and separating the material which in, um, enables you to work softer with the material if that's the correct way of putting it so in a softer manner that when example you're working with stuff like soya beans and other types of beans that you because you're handling the material a little bit softer in a softer manner i don't know there's afrikaans word for this but it doesn't um, really um, translate that properly to english um, it's not like you've got a short space and you need to do all the threshing there get it over with and done and that's mostly when you get your splits and all those types of things yeah. but with this because you've got more time to Correct. do the threshing and separation that's why you're able to achieve what you're achieving Exactly, that's basically the desired outcome to have a gentle threshing, that's how we call that, for, uh, combined with a forgiving behavior. So forgiving means even if your settings are not set correctly, the rotor is long enough to forgive about that without increasing losses. So that's the length of the rotor that enables us to do that. Means we can be gentle, that's coming through the helix structure, but also the threshing elements that are a lot less aggressive than other machines. Uh, as well as how open we can run the concave opening and then combined with the length that allows us a forgiving behavior of the machine means we can also uh, still separate and run with lowest possible losses um, doesn't matter how the machine is set and how the conditions are I'm with you okay and then the feeder so let, because now you've got the rotor all of that's working but now you need to be able to give this thing great yep. okay what was the uh, the thinking behind that and why because you went a totally unprecedented uh, um, direction in terms of splitting the feeder house okay so you've got the right hand side of the uh, the header basically feeding you feeding the one side of the the one rotor and then the other side feeding the others it sounds to me like i want to just bring them in combine them and basically i don't know average them out and then put them into the rotors that would have been my thinking. Why did you end up, go the other way? Well, at the end, it's a matter of how you steer your crop flow with minimum friction, right? So every corner, every different surface can cause friction. And in our analysis, we have uh, realized that steering the crop flow into the channel, so we call it two channel uh, crop inlet, uh, we have been able to reduce that and that all pays off also with uh, better straw quality for example in small grains as well as better crop quality in large grains and small grains as well so this is again the machine is overall designed for superior efficiency so it has a very very efficient operation so low fuel consumption and this is strictly considered throughout the machine and that one pays off there as well that's interesting so this there was a lot of reasons why you went that direction, not only just for the uh, uh, um, the crop flow as such. Yep, correct. So um, crop flow is one thing, but there's other reasons as mentioned. Okay, then um, I just want to get to let's let's first of all discuss the elephant in the room, okay, or the lack of. <laughs> so why did you throw away the steering wheel? You know what? We start based on the customer requirements. So that's what we did over multiple years all around the globe. And one thing that consistently came up is, what the heck, why do you have a bloody steering wheel in front of me? I don't need that, right? So you're running with auto steer, auto guide all day long. Um, basically, headland turn is automated on our machine as well. So basically, there's no need except road transport where you even touch the steering wheel. So this is for operator comfort. Typically you sit and lean on top of your steering wheel throughout the entire day. Uh, you get back issues and so on. Um, and you have a huge impact on visibility. So this, these are the two contributors that led us to that design, which is unique. Nobody has been able to uh, copy that. 
Um, this is visibility, which is superior, right? So you're not forced to look on the steering column or on the steering wheel anymore. You have a superior view on your header, which is important directly in front of your feeder house. And then the comfort is by far better than with a steering wheel in front of you. So this was a customer requirement. So we listened to that and we continue to do so. That is really, really interesting. Okay, so I'm um, not going to stick around too much on the track system. I mean, track is a track um, uh, just to make sure we don't get stuck. Um, okay, cleaning shoe. So you've got a, a very long, let's call it a thinner cleaning shoe. Why did you go that direction? Because yeah, you could have just made it a little bit, let's call it wider. Yeah. Uh, but so it's longer, better. <laughs> yeah, so the longer the better, summarize it, I think, pretty well. Um, so we have seen in our lab analysis that the longer the cleaning shoe, again, same logic like on the rotor, the longer it is, the more time you have to separate this, the, the grain out to reduce the amount of losses. So that's how, why we went to a narrow design, which fits into all markets globally. As I said, it's a global machine made for all regions and market requirements in combination with the forgiving behavior that the rotor provides as well. I'm, I'm with you. And then power plant. How did you decide on which power plant then needs to fit with yeah, everything? So you're talking engines? Yes, engines. So engines are primarily used what we have. So the smaller class 7 uses an echo power engine uh, that we produce in, inside echo. So this is a, a part of our own company which provides superior reliability and efficiency. Um, we do not provide or produce larger engines, so that's why we focus there on uh, key suppliers that we utilize in many products of ECHO. So if you look on fan tractors, larger wheel tractors, larger articulated track tractors, we're using MAN as well. Uh, so it was a, a no-brainer, let's say, to go for the most efficient engine that is available in the market, which is MAN. Uh, I'm with you because, yeah, uh, diesel-wise, I mean, those things just, uh, they almost run on air, but uh, not quite. <laughs> um, okay, then there's another thing, yeah, on the top end there. And I want to ask you about that because apparently you and Franz, um, or someone from the factory, I'm guessing it was you, had a bet with him that he would not need to clean the air cleaner on the, the air filter on this thing for a whole season. And he told them that it's South Africa, you do not understand our dust, it will, I will have to. And he went through the whole season and he didn't have to clean it. How does that concept work and what did you do there? So you're talking about the radiator, which is a re yes. using a reversible fan. Yeah, that thing. Um, so overall, as I said, we've been listening to our farmers and what pays most of the time off for farmers is low need for maintenance, right? So. Keep going, don't need to stop to clean it and uh, wash it or whatever. Um, and the fan is typically an area of the machine that gets dirty, as you said, typically needs to be cleaned every uh, other day or every day. Yeah, every uh, day. The reversible fan takes that off. So we have a, a logic that basically reverses um, in a fixed um, period. So that just turns around, flips around um, the, the fan and that blows all the dust off and that keeps the radiator basically clean throughout the entire year. So I haven't met anybody that was needed or forced to clean it so far anywhere on this earth. So I think that works pretty good. Definitely. If it can withstand our dust, it's because we've got yeah. different dust here than other It can other be pretty dusty, <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay, if you were to take the, the fence as is, okay, and as a project, what is the one thing that you are most proud of on this combine? Well, there's a lot of things I'm proud of. So I think it combines a lot of things farmers are looking for. Um, but I think if you look on the capacity it provides combined with the efficiency, so in terms of low fuel, low losses and the superior grain sample, where many farmers or elevator owners are asking us, has this been cleaned already when it comes out of the combine? I think this is very unique, combined with a lot of other advantages. Awesome. Constantine, thank you very much. Right, so that is Constantine from um, Echo or from Fint. Um, now you know more about where the Fint comes from, how they got to the design and why they did what they did. And also listening to customers. Apparently, 
a steering wheel is useless now. So this idea from Farm Spice. If you're uh, interested in more, link it on top, and you can go to the Fend website and find out a little bit more about that combine. Till next time, cheers.